What's up everyone and welcome to the sketch your own game paper walkthrough. This paper is by Sheng Yu Wang, David Bao, and Jun Yan Zhu. In this paper, the others show how with as few as just one sample, we are able to modify the output of a game. Now, if you're new to games, you could check out our previous videos on games so you could understand every bit of what we're gonna see here. Now coming back to the paper, as you could see right here we have this generative model which when given an input noise is able to generate this type of data. Now what if we're able to modify the weights of this gen generator neural network right here such that we now have a new generator called G prime whose outputs are based on some input sketches as you could see here by default the model will just generate horses you would have horses you will even have people riding those horses but when the model takes into consideration those input sketches you now see how this output is based on this input sketches another very important part of this paper is the fact that this number of input sketches don't have to be a large number so even with one input sketch you're able to produce this new generator g prime whose outputs are similar to what we have in the sketches now although thanks to this paper today we could have anyone with just a few sketches dictate the kind of outputs again can produce previously this wasn't very easy as we would need a team of experts to invest months or even years into a single model on specific data sets. And in order to allow just anyone use a few number of sketches to dictate the output of a GAN, the others take advantage of off-the-shelf generative models pre-trained on large-scale data and devise an approach to adjust a subset of the model weights to match the user's sketches. We'll look at this shortly. The authors also ensure that this output at images based on the input sketches not only resemble or look like this input sketches, but preserve the color, texture, and background context of the original model, which was trained on an initial large data set. We now dive into the method. The method is built based on some two major challenges. That is how to utilize a very small amount of user provided sketch data and how to synthesize realistic images without requiring the user to create those realistic images. The three main solutions are across domain adversarial learning, image space regularization, and then data augmentation to avoid overfitting. Let's get straight away into the cross-domain adversarial learning. We have this figure right here, and it's in this part where we do the cross-domain adversarial learning. As we could see right here, we have initially a generator G, which later on is turned into this G prime right here. So initially we have a generator G, which using or taking as input this noise outputs this kind of image then we then use a pre-trained cross domain model in this case f which permits us leave from the image domain to the sketch domain so we leave from images to sketches so come back we have the noise we have the image making use of this pre-trained network we have a sketch now this output is sketch right here is going to be a fake sketch obviously we have this fake sketch and now we have say the input sketch or a real sketch from the user and obviously we have a discriminator whose aim is to differentiate between a fake input sketch and a real input sketch and this is now trained using a loss which the others call L sketch and which is defined as such to understand exactly 
how they come up with this formula you could check on our previous videos on the gains and most especially the video on the gain loss and so what we have now going on here is the weight of an initial generator network right here have been modified such that the output images which are similar to the sketches another way we could look at this network right here is we could combine this two that's combine this trainable generator and this fixed cross domain pre-trained GAN F into just one network so we have this one network and what this one network does is it takes an input noise and it generates a sketch and once it generates a sketch which is a, obviously a fixed sketch the discriminator says whether this is a fake or not and based on the feedback from this discriminator we are able to modify the parameters of this initial network g up to the point where we have a new network right here g prime but since we are not interested in the output of sketches right here or this fake or we're not interested in generating the fake sketches what we do is we break this up now as we could see and then we collect the outputs at this region and this output now has been generated in such a way as to look like this real input as sketches here when it goes through this cross domain GAN and so this is how we're able to generate this kinds of images which look similar to those sketches we've trained the whole network on now one downside of just focusing on modifying those weights such that the images generated look similar to the sketch is that this outputted images may have a reduced quality and so to preserve the image quality and diversity we still have to train on the initial data set on which the initial model g was produced so now we have this new loss l image and then what we do is once this image is generated we pass it in here there's obviously a fake image so we have the discriminator again this time around which classifies the input images and sees whether they are fake or real and then based on this feedback this generator right here has been updated and so now we are not only updating the parameters of the generator such that it outputs images which look like the sketches but we also updating these parameters in order to maintain a certain image quality and diversity again here this l image is defined as such and then the others try weight regularization which the reported to have slightly worse performance compared to the image space regularization which we've just seen the overall objective as you can see here is the l which is equal l sketch plus lambda image l image the use lambda image 0 0.7 which controls the importance of the image regularization term now in order to prevent model overfitting and accelerate fine tuning they modify the weights of the mapping network of stylegon 2 since modifying this mapping network is sufficient to obtain the target distribution which is a subset of the original distribution they also use pre-chain weights as we had seen right here we had a fixed model here so these weights aren't updated during the training processes and then they go ahead to use data augmentation and they also notice that as from 30 input sketches the fact that data augmentation is used doesn't necessarily improve the results just like every machine learning model this model needs to be evaluated and to evaluate the model's performance they use the fresher inception distance between the images generated by the model and the evaluation set images and the way we create this evaluation set images is that we have 
a known data set like the Elson data set, which contains images of horses, carts, and churches. And then we convert these images into sketches using the photo sketch method. And then from this converted sketches, the hand select sets of 30 sketches with similar shapes and poses to be designated as the user inputs. And so right now, what we have is the sketches and the images which generate the sketches. Then what we now do is we take the sketches, use this model to generate those images, and then we compare this images generated by the model with those ground truth images which were used in generating the sketches using the FID. And so for a recap, we have in here the model. So right here we have our model. Then what we we'll do is we have some images from the Elson data set or from some other data set which have been converted into sketches using the photo sketch or the, the method in the photo sketch paper. We generate this sketches right here. And then what we do now is we use this model to generate or we use the sketches to generate this output image right here. And then we compare this output image with the ground truth image using the FID. And here we go. Yeah, the or some results. We have the original images and the sketches. Then using the baseline method, here are the outputs of the GAN. And then using the sketch your own GAN paper method, which is this paper method, here are the kind of outputs we get. We see clearly from here that this sketch your own GAN method outperforms this baseline method as those images look very similar to the sketch. We could also see this with this next example. We have this input sketch. Here are the generated outputs. This sort of one. You have the generated outputs and this one. And then here we have some quantitative results. We see that this method performs better than the baseline and the original models. And also we can see how the number of samples, the initialization of the sketch discriminator the tuning of parameters in the mapping network and also augmentation affects the results on different data inputs right here and then in this other study we see how we get the best results when we combine cross-domain adversarial learning and image space regularization in this figure, we'll see how I'll uh, look at the results produced when we use only the cross-domain adversarial learning, when we use the cross-domain adversarial learning and weight regularization, and then when we use the cross-domain adversarial learning with image space regularization. Some application of the techniques we've seen so far in this paper are the latent space edits and natural image editing. Using the method which was described in this GAN space paper to do output manipulations like for example adding fur to an image or to this cat image let's expand this or uh, let's say taking an input image of a cat's eyes open and then manipulating such that we have the cat's eyes closed we found that this method still works even with the customized sketch your own GAN models and then for natural image editing, we are able to get, say, this input real image right here, and then output this image of a standing cat based on this input. We also see this output from this input right here. And the way this is done is we take this real image and project it into a lower dimensional space, and it is that projected output from that image which has been used in this training right here so if we have the standing cat sketch right here what happens is 
our model will take this projected input from here and then generate an output which is similar to the input as catch which is that of a standing cat and what we get at the end is a standing cat but one which looks similar to that of the real image which was responsible for the projected or the low dimensional inputs z right here and again performing the latent edits still work with this customized models we can see how we add fur to this input here we have added fur and this again we've added some fur we also have some other interesting results like this but note that this model doesn't only have the great results as there are some cases where this model fails to output results which are similar to the input as sketches nonetheless the researchers did a great job and hopefully we'll have more research in this direction as time goes on if you want to keep seeing content like this don't forget to like and subscribe in our next video we are going to have a practical session where we shall generate our own images based on our input sketches